Are you looking to increase your design skills and productivity? From sketching, surfacing, assemblies, and everything in between, our books have you covered. Purchase a paperback or PDF version in our store today. Hello everyone, this is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries and today I'm going to answer a couple of questions that I had. Uh, question number one, uh, once you have divided faces and you want to put them back, is there any way to join them again? And so there is. And for right now, I'm going to show you that if I have a face that I divide, and in this case, I'm going to divide with a little spline. Hold on. Let's go and do a little spline. It goes from this little corner to that corner there. Boop. Say OK. And finish. So I started with a flat face. I put a curve on it. I went to the divide face command, divide face. I selected the face to divide. I selected the entity to divide with. And now I have two faces out of one. What does that mean? That means I can literally select a face like that and give it a different color, for example. So if I'm doing some lettering, on a piece of geometry or some sort of design or even artwork, I can divide faces and give separate colors to one of the faces or the other. Or I could do an offset and I can select a face like this and I can offset it like that to make kind of a step. So these are the things that I can do. This is the reason why I might want to divide a face. But once I have divided faces, divided faces, <laughs> divided faces, there's a command called join face. And if you type in join up in the little finder there, you'll see that there's this one. It says join face. It's a legacy command. And uh, there are certain commands that uh, I think are really great. It's a legacy command. And you basically select the whole solid and it looks through the whole solid and sees if it can put faces back together. So there you go. I've done a join face. Um, as you can see, it's knocked out my, uh, C, um, my C datum and one of these dimensions. Um, okay, but there's another way you can do it. And that is if you've got two faces that, are, that need to be joined, they'll only join if they're so close that they can really come together as one. And so what you can do is a replace face. And I can say that this face will be replaced with that face and then that will turn it into one face or I can do a delete face if I delete this face then this face will have to be trimmed over to uh, meet all those edges so when I delete face and I've got a delete face with the heel on see heel and if I don't have heel there we go so I'll control Z just to undo that if I delete face and if I don't have the heel comp command on, when I select it, it becomes a sheet body. See? I don't want to do that. Control-Z. There we go. And then um, there's yet another way. And that is I can go to the surface mode and I can do an enlarge. And when I enlarge one of these surfaces right here, and I can pull this out, it makes another surface that encompasses the other surface. See it there? Pull that out like that. So that's the enlarge command. Okay, so you enlarge the surface. And then once you have the surface that's enlarged, you go ahead and replace face. And I'm going to replace this face and this face with the enlarged face. And control B. And that has both faces to become one again. So there's some really nice little techniques that you can use. Now the next question I'm going to ask is um, quite a while ago I was doing um, a demo and I said that when you're doing industrial design you don't do G1 tangent arcs and I was asked why. And the answer to that is with industrial design products with very finely designed products 
when you use this kind of an arc, you get a band of light that happens at the arc plane interface because the curvature um, changes too abruptly. And so uh, we can take a look at that. We can do an analysis and section analysis. And when we select these three surfaces, we can see that the curvature goes from straight to pure arc. And so right where there's a change in that inflection, there's a, there's a really large change. And this is what we're trying to avoid. Basically with industrial design, with well-designed products, you want this curvature to come in slowly and be more gentle. Otherwise the light um, shows a very abrupt uh, change and the product does not look as well designed as it could be. So what I would suggest in this case is two things, well, three things. Uh, if you go to the edge blend, go to a G2 curvature continuity edge blend with a 0.65 RHO, okay? And then you blend like that instead. Now this blend that I've just made is inherently nicer looking than the G1 blend. And the proof of the pudding is when you go to analysis section analysis, and you select those curves and you can see that the curvature here starts slowly, more slowly, um, and then uh, reaches a crescendo right in the middle and then comes down. So that's one way of looking at it. And now that we have the uh, curve analysis tool there, we can see the ramifications of changing that RHO. So if I have an RHO that's um, higher, like 0.8, then I get an even more gradual change in the curvature from straight to arc. So you can see, of course, I get a higher degree of curvature right at the center there. So um, that's the effects of RHO. And that is how you work this kind of, a, this kind of an industrial design requirement. Um, here is one more way to accomplish this. This is kind of a really Frankenstein way, but you can, let's say, uh, do a chamfer. Here's a chamfer. You chop that off. Do a generous chamfer. Say, okay. Okay? So that's a chamfer. Well, that's no good. But then what you can do is go into the Curve uh, Studio Spline, and you can <coughs> create a G2 curvature or a G3 curvature continuity spline that goes from that point to that point right there, G3, and say OK. So we've uh, done that, and now I'm going to go to um, a sweep along a guide surface. So that is uh, sweep along a guide, and my curve is going to be that, and my guide string is going to be that. Say OK. And now I'm going to do a simple replace face so that that face is replaced by the sweep along a guide face. Nice. Now I'm going to control B that. And OK. OK, so there's another type of curve. It's not a G2, it's a G3. And if I do the curvature analysis on that one, you can see that that gives you a different shape a shape that to some degree is superior because it goes even more gradually and then it does something interesting here. So there's all these different techniques that you can use. I've only shown you three or four out of the ten that I know. But that gives you um, uh, a, an insight as to why you do something like this instead of a regular edge blend, which is by definition uh, kind, of, kind of homely. Thank you very much. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Please um, don't feel, um, uh, or, or I should say feel free to uh, give a comment, ask a question. Um, at some point we'll get to these questions. We'll answer them in this way. And I really appreciate the uh, your uh, viewership. Thank you. Like and subscribe and have a wonderful day.